we just lost a chicken. Is that our chicken? I don't. It's trying to get back in. Yeah, open the door. Come here, chick, Good morning, one and all. Welcome back to Red's Homestead. Thought I'd give a little tour today of the Racken House and how everything works. So now we enter the Racken House. So these right here are our breeding rabbits. And right now it's a little, right now it's a little too hot to do some breeding, but um, we probably will start back up again in uh, maybe October, September. Just gotta see what the temperatures are like. Sometimes it can be very difficult walking in here when everybody's inside. Normally I like to uh, throw out like scratch out there so that they're not in here when I'm doing the chores, but hey, what can you do? So this hutch, very, very simple design, made it big enough for in total six cages, but the chickens have decided to roost right there. So right now we have five cages and eventually if we decide to go bigger and get another cage for another rabbit, we'll force them to roost where we actually made roosts. But for now we don't need that kind of expansion for rabbits so they're just gonna be happy where they are. I hear you guys. So during the winter we will actually cover these cages when it gets down to the teens uh, just with a blanket just to stop drafts because this is a very drafty um, racking house. We made it with that purpose to keep it drafty during this time of year of the summer. Summer gets 100 degrees and these rabbits do not like the heat. So we keep a, we keep fans in here. One fan's right there against the wall. Another fan whoop, is right there that blows upwards to these cages and keeps a good airflow going. I've also done a video of how I keep them cool with ceramic tiles, uh, frozen water bottles, just everything you can do to help them keep a lower body temperature. And we used to put hay inside the cages, but it was just a big waste. They would be stirring it around and dropping it underneath. And this is their good Timothy orchard grass, alfalfa hay, whatever we want to supplement them with. Uh, now we put it on top. We put it on top because it's kind of a, an exercise, a game, entertainment, something for them to pull down. But it's also a lot less waste. And that's it for the rabbits. Um, really, really, really easy. Uh, what we'll have to do is around noon, when it really starts getting warm, we change out the water bottles. Uh, these are the ones from yesterday. So what we'll do is just trade these out with the ones we have in the freezer. We have one actual traditional waterer in there. We probably gonna take that away pretty soon. We keep it in there for the chicks, the smaller ones. I'll show you another water source we have in there too. Chick starter in one bucket, layer feed in another bucket. We keep a couple different, uh, a couple different feeders in here, two of them actually. We got one right here, that's where the chicks usually go to, so I put the starter in there. And then I have kind of a free-for-all bucket back over there, and that's where I put uh, the layer feed and the chickens go after that one. And that's how we feed uh, 24, 24 birds. So our first water source on the inside is just your standard uh, water that you can get a tractor supply. When you have ducks, you have to constantly clean this one. And now we'll show the second water source that they have. Our second water source is just a bucket. Like one of those feed pans 
that you get. We just change this out usually twice a day. And that's it. So let's get a look at the actual Racken house itself. So as we showed here, rabbit hutch, five cages, and then this is where the chickens like to roost at night, the adult chickens. The young chickens, unfortunately, want to roost over there. We'll get to that. But the way it works is rabbits poop dropping all down there. Chickens stir it up, mix everything into a lovely compost mix. And then we can empty this out once a year, whenever we want, and use it to top dress our gardens. Flowing down this side, this is where we just had all the food and waterers. That's the main source. And then we also have one more down here. This is a hay rack I built. I built this just out of regular old wood, trees around. It was uh, just a curiosity I wanted to do it. This is where we keep all the hay stored, but we have to keep it under a tarp because for two reasons. One, this is one of the chickens' favorite nesting spot to lay their eggs. And two, when we got the new chicks, once we took the brooder out of this room, they decided to roost up here. So we're in a halfway decision of removing that entirely from in here because, I mean, it's, they're just pooping on a tarp and it's nasty. When the older chickens roost right here, it just goes straight to the ground and that's it. It gets stirred up in the pine shavings. This is where we wanted them to roost. This little cubby hole. Now this is where the other half of the eggs are laid. There you go, you see one is doing her business right now. So we're not gonna disturb her for too long. But we had posted all of these along here because that's where we wanted them to roost. But they have decided that they're gonna roost where they're gonna wanna roost. And how did I design these two doors? Well, I designed, I'm getting scratched on. I'm in the line of fire here. <laughs> Spraying me. So I made both sides identical. We have two large doors with a four by four post in the middle and that post is removable. It's on brackets, top and bottom. So I can completely open both doors and have this open on both sides. And then that eight by 10 right there, it can come right up. So if I needed to, I can drive my four wheeler and trailer through this. I haven't had to yet, but I designed it so that I could, if I wanted to really clean out this entire thing, I can do it with a vehicle. So every morning, the chickens and the ducks wait for us to come out here. And they come to this side. And that is their exit to the outside world. Here on the outside, they have a very large run to go in and out as they please all day long. And what we've done here at the top, these are a shade cloths for the heat and the sun and that afternoon is terrible, but it's also some form of hawk protection. We have bad hawks here. I mean, they will, uh, they'll snatch these guys up. And on the outside, so this is surrounded by an electric fence. Uh, it's about 120 feet electric fence. This is probably the ducks, maybe the, the small chicks favorite spot is under the fluffy butt hut. It used to be the adult chicks until we got this built on this side. This was all Shannon. Shannon did all that and Shannon did this. They like to roost on these, um, staying under the shade cloth and being able to have somewhere to roost off the ground. And then under that little thing right there, that's where we have the dust baths. Now, they do dig down into the clay, make their own dust baths, but we give them another option, something that can stay dry. For the ducks, we used to have two kiddie pools in there. We recently upgraded to that right there. It's almost a, it's like a dog, one of those collapsible dog pools. We're gonna test that out and see what it's like. A, it means we don't have to dump the water inside this pen like we do with the kiddie pools. It has a drain plug that I could run a hose and I could run it down out here and it won't flood this area as much. 
we're gonna test it out and see how it works. And then I've also added this 50 gallon waterer that runs down to the chicken little nipples down there, which gives them another source of water out here if they don't wanna use the whole pool. And we will constantly feed uh, kitchen scraps. You can see some leftover watermelon right there. I like to throw scratch grains out here. You can see that's what they're going after right now. And they love it. And typically in the mornings, we will cut some greens collecting from around the house, fill up a bucket and throw those in here as well. So what kind of animals are they? Well, four khaki Campbell ducks. We're using them for mostly egg production. Um, and then we're gonna attempt to breed and see what that's like. Now I read khaki Campbells do not make good mamas. Usually you have to incubate them yourselves. But again, it's gonna be kind of a lesson that we're gonna learn because we've never incubated and bred here, except for rabbits. We have 10 sapphire gems. They're probably the best chickens I've ever had. I love them. Temperament's perfect. Egg laying production's amazing. Almost one per day per bird. And they are pretty much pets, practically. Then we adopted five others. We adopted five, some kind of Americana that they look like, uh, that we were told that they were Easter Eggers. Um, one turned out to be a Cornish cross. We ate that one. But the other four are very similar to the five that we bought as additions to our sapphire gems. We bought five Easter Eggers. So we have nine, supposedly nine total Easter Eggers, straight run. So we're gonna have hopefully some roosters so we can breed those. Because what we have learned or read is sapphires, they have brown eggs. Easter eggers have blue eggs. When you breed them, you get olive eggs. And that's supposed to be really in demand right now. And hopefully it stays that way by the time we breed and we're ready for them. So we've been doing this netting right here, which obviously is not working. And I'm gonna remove it because the bees are getting in there to pollinate. But the main reason for us doing that was to keep the vine borers off. But if bees can get in there, then the vine borers have no problem getting in there either. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this netting, not use it. My kind of idea was to keep this on in the morning because that's when I heard that they were most active and then remove it during the day so the bees can come in and pollinate. I don't think that's really of any value. So we're just gonna remove it entirely and try to keep an eye out on the squash vine borers. They already have two, gotten to two zucchini. You can see these two right here. That is evidence of a vine borer getting into those. So what I might be doing is digging, see if I can find it and pull it out and Hopefully, you can see I've started. I'm going to bury these and see if I can get them to re-root. And we're also going to start some more from seed to see if we can have another round of uh, zucchini for the fall. It's time to harvest the garden. I think I have a pretty big haul to take away today. Even with those vine borers, I have quite a bit to get. I have found the first one of the year, the tomato hornworm. My chickens are about to feast. So these guys are easy to spot when you see something bare like this. That's unnatural for a tomato. Something is eating it. So this little guy is about to take a ride. Chickens or ducks, who's gonna be the lucky one? So tomato leaves are toxic to chickens. So that's why I don't want to feed them. This right here. <laughs> We're 
about to have a fiasco here. Let's all the chickens see what he's got. <laughs> oh wow, she's devouring it on the run. Oh, tripped and fell. All right, the fun and games is over. Back to harvesting. Today was an awesome haul. <laughs> Look at that. At least that's done before the heat of the day. Now we gotta figure out what we're gonna do to preserve this stuff. Lots more pickles. So I've decided on zucchini, cantaloupe, beefsteak tomatoes, Roma tomatoes, and some cucumbers. And that's gonna be my round two of planting. So let's get started. Be doing a little experiment with these. Um, I got these off of Amazon for super, super cheap. So basically, we have uh, my wife got me into a Facebook group. I think it's called like Shopaholics, and they give you coupon codes for things on Amazon for like 50 to 90 percent off. So five seed trays with grow lights and humidity domes, and I got it for like seven dollars. So I'm going to try it out. That's pretty cool. Definitely worth seven bucks. The other ones, I have four more trays. I'm gonna be growing them outside in the greenhouse just like I normally would. But that'd be really cool if this works. Well, come on there. What you eating? Get in the bag. Why don't you get those black wine boards for me? Hey, why don't y'all tell us we had visitors? So the game plan is the wifey over there is going to be somewhat enticing them somehow into the racking house with some scratch grains, some greens that she just went and collected. And I'm going to sneak around the side and close them up. We just lost a chicken. Is that our chicken? I don't... It's trying to get back in. Yeah, open the door. Come here, chick, chick, chick. Come here. Come here. Come here, chick, 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 chick. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> All right, I guess we're, uh, I guess we're going to be clipping some wings. They're still out here. So Shannon just went over to corral them into the fence, and <laughs> looks like they just came in on their own. Well, all but one. Oh, there it goes. Is that it? Yeah, I just said that. I have a feeling it jumped from the fluffy butt hut and launched right over this fence. Probably. Or it jumped off of the little hutch right down there. Okay. Nine, we're good. 23. Oh my, when they're all in here on the ground, <laughs> they do look like quite a few. Yeah. Well, there we go. Chickens and ducks are back in bed and ready to be scared out of their minds when the fireworks start. 